Hello, Assalamu alaikum. As we are discussing the medical legal aspects of uh, incise wounds, and in this lecture, I will be discussing more about other aspects of the uh, medical legal aspects of the incise wound. We'll discuss the suicidal and homicidal cutthroats. What are the different salient features? How can we distinct between suicidal and homicidal cutthroats? Then I will discuss what are the tentative or hesitational cuts. And what are the fabricated cuts or self-inflicted injuries? And what are the features of the defense wound? So these are uh, other medical legal issues which are most important related with the inside wound. So I'm heading towards the lecture. Take care. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And my channel name is Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning. I'm Dr. Javed Iqbal Koka, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As we're discussing the mechanical injuries and this is the third lecture on sharp edge injuries. And in this, I will be discussing the other medical legal aspects of incise wound. And the learning objective I have discussed in the previous video, I will discuss in this lecture, we'll see the differences in suicidal and homicidal cutthroat. In suicidal cut throat, the injury starts high up on the neck above the thyroid cartilage and opposite the working hand and extends down medially in front of the neck. And then it, trans it is transverse and then a little upwards, but not it goes up than the starting point. So it starts from the opposite side, comes down in the middle, and then again a little up, but not up to the that height from where it has been starting. So the gradual deepening and then shallowing. This is the feature of the suicidal cutthroat. But in homicidal cutthroat, it is usually below the thyroid cartilage. It is horizontal, that is straight or oblique down and a single bold cut, which usually lies on the both sides of the neck. There is no tailing phenomena and no gradual deepening or shelling, a bold cut, which is horizontally or obliquely placed, extending usually on the both sides of the neck. In suicidal cut throat, there may be tentative or hesitational cuts but in homicidal, there are no such cuts. And in suicidal cut throat, there are no defense wounds. And in homicidal cut throat, if the person is aware, is awake, then he definitely try to defend himself and there will be defense wounds, other injuries of defense wound found on other parts of the body. And other uh, distinct and contrast feature is that in suicidal cut throat, the weapon is usually uh, grasped in the hand or it may be present nearby. Whereas in homicidal cut throat, it is usually absent, but sometimes it is left intentionally to avert the motor. Then another uh, aspect that is suicidal cut throat, the scene is usually undisturbed and quite a skewed place a quite undisturbed place. Whereas in homicidal, the signs of struggle, the signs of scuff, scuffle and disturbance at the scene of crime is usually observed. In suicidal cut throat, the blood vessels are cut on the left side, while the right side usually escape. If the person is right-handed, usually the vessels will be cut on the opposite, that's the left side. And on the right side, usually they are escaped. But Blood vessels in homicidal cut throat, as it is horizontally placed, extend in the both sides of the neck, usually both sides of the vessels are cut. 
This is the uh, suicidal picture of the suicidal cutthroat and you can see the tentative cuts, which are superficial. And these are tentative cuts usually seen in suicidal cutthroat. And I'm, I'm uh, sharing you the uh, one of the study which was carried out at King Edward Medical College in 1999. And this was published in the annals of the college. And they uh, studied the differentiation between the homicidal and the suicidal cutthroat. And they discussed it that this is very important and should be highlighted. They studied about 837 autopsies, which were conducted at the King Edward Medical College between the period of 1984 to 1996, and they were reviewed. And it was found that the majority of the cases, they were homicidal cutthroats, and the male predominance was uh, seen, and it lies with, within the range of the age of 21 to 30 years. Then the defense wound, tailing phenomena, and associated injuries were also seen in majority of the homicidal cases with the wound present below the level of thyroid cartilage. Then suicidal cut throats were also associated with tentative cuts with wounds at, at or above the level of thyroid cartilage. And it was found, therefore, that the characteristics of homicidal and suicidal cutthroats are definitive. But still, more parameters should be explored to reach a final conclusion. So this was the uh, article published. Now about the hesitational or the tentative cuts. The hesitational cuts derive as it's from the name that they are in hesitation with which these incidents are made by the person intending to commit suicide by any cutting instrument. And he usually make preliminary cuts before gathering sufficient courage to make a final deep incision. He is in fact trying to find out how painful it would be to make a deeper and a fatal cut. These tentative cuts are usually small, multiple, superficial, and skin deep. They are seen at usually at the commencement of the incise bone, and they merge with the main incision. They are commonly seen in suicidal cut throats and are at the also on the suicidal cuts at the wrist joint. So these tentative cuts not only are seen in the suicidal cut throats, but in suicidal wrist cuts, they are also observed. So this is a, a photograph showing the tentative cuts in the wrist cut, suicidal wrist cut. A right-handed person will hold the razor in his right hand and it will start incising from the left to right. The tailing of the wound is therefore seen on the right side. The hesitational cuts are not found in homicidal assaults. Now about the forged or fictitious wounds or fabricated wounds. The injuries which are produced by a person on his body himself, that means self-inflicted or fabricated, or the injuries which are caused by another person, by, which is also called, called as a friendly hand, that is self-suffered suffered by another individual with an agreement to do the uh, minimal damage. So the self-inflicted 
fabricated wounds. These are the injuries which the person inflict himself upon his own body. As the name tells, these injuries are produced by a person on his own body to gain some ulterior motive. The fabricator usually produces that much injury as he thinks necessary and avoids doing serious harm to himself. And the objective is usually to support a false charge on the enemy with ulterior motive or to avert suspicion. The fabricated wounds are often incised, but it can occasionally be stab wounds. Use of marking nuts, as we know in the artificial bruises, is common to produce marking, to use marking nut to produce artificial bruises. Now the false charge with ulterior motive, what are? Sometimes it is done to convert slight injury into gross injury and to achieve the motive or the pressurize the opposite party. Or to bring charges of ill treatment by the officers during training or by the prisoners during detention or the individuals in police custody or by the girls to bring the charges of rape or recruits to escape military training. So these are various ulterior motives which with, uh, during which the person injured himself and that are the self-inflicted injuries. Now to avert the suspicion, what are those situations in which the uh, suspicion is averted. Sometimes it is done to destroy certain evidence which might connect the person with some crime or by some assailant to show that what he has done was in self-defense or the policeman or the watchman they show that they got these injuries in some encounter. So the characteristics of these injuries are generally they are only skin deep because person produces only that much pain which is minimal. They are almost always caused by sharp edge weapon like razor or knife. Injuries are usually on the exposed parts of the body and on easily accessible parts. These elective sites are the head, forehead, front of the chest, abdomen, arms and thighs. The vital areas are never involved. Sometimes we will see scars of various duration indicating the previous attempts of infliction of the injuries. The most important is that the statement of the person will not match with the observation and the finding of the injuries. And this will raise a suspicion and the possibility of self-infliction and fabrication. These, in this photograph, you can see the multiple tentative or fabricated wounds on the front of the forearm. The postmortem examination in such cases should include incision on the arms and the wrist to reveal the bruises caused by restraints. And this was a case in which the person was tied and the underneath there were abrasions and cuts. The diagnosis will be with very careful physical examination will show the characteristics of being fabricated. Examination of clothes will show that there is no corresponding cuts on the clothes. And the history of the case will not be coinciding with the injuries. The explanation of the fabricator will be found so inconsistent with the observed fact that no doubt will be left. Now about the defense injuries. The 
these injuries are sustained by a person as a result of his spontaneous reaction to protect himself when attacked immediate and instinctive reaction of the victim to save himself by raising arms or grasping the weapon and the nature of injury will depend upon the kind of weapon used the person may either try to grasp the weapon or raise the upper arm to ward off the attack like this and may sustain injuries to those parts which are used to defend himself and these defense wounds are usually found on the grasping surfaces of the hands on the ulnar borders of the forearm or the raised upper limb or the dorsum of the palm when used to cover the head and face so defense injuries are not necessarily confined to the upper limbs the person falling down may use his legs to defend himself or and will receive the injuries to the lower legs and if he ducks down he will receive the injuries at the back so any body part may be injured depending upon the method of defense so defense injuries are also indicator of homicidal attack they also indicate that the victim was alive conscious aware and was able to resist the attack and the defense injuries will not be found if the victim was unconscious or unaware to defend himself so at autopsy detailed examination is required on all sides of the body so summary of this lecture is that we have learned the salient features and differences in suicidal and homicidal cut throat and we have also learned the other medical legal aspects of incise wound like tentative cuts or the hesitational cuts then the fabricated or the self infiltrated injuries or the wounds what are the salient features and we have also learnt about the defense wounds so this is all about thank you very much take care and allah hafiz